Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at lighting a simple exterior scene. We're going to open up the file Lighting Part 4 Start 2010, and in this file you'll see that we have a sky background already set up. This is a simple hemisphere that has a cylindrical UVW modifier on it and a basic background sky texture so that we can kind of see it in the background. And when we render this out, you can see that in the background and it also shows up in reflections. Now we're going to add two elements to the scene. One is going to be the sunlight which we'll create with a direct light and then the other is going to be the bounce light which we're going to create with a dome light setup. We're going to create the dome light setup first um, just so that we can really see and tune how that is set up. Right now we're using mental ray and if we go into our render settings you can see that we have a very low sampling quality and indirect illumination is unchecked and one more thing that we're going to set is under the processing tab I'm going to set a material override so that we can deal with a real flat material while we're lighting. This is usually a pretty good idea so we can bring up the material editor and let's just drag any basic gray material in there that's not being used. And now we'll do a quick render again. And you can see that we have a really flat just gray render so that we can easily see the lighting in the scene. Let's get to setting up our soft shadow bounce light. I'm going to go into the layers and make sure that we're on the light dome layer so that we can easily select and hide this light dome once we're done because we're going to create a lot of different lights. And we'll go into the top view here. We're going to start off with a spotlight. So let's go to create lights and choose standard lights and we're going to create a target spotlight. Make sure that that encompasses a good amount of the scene and that it's pointing towards the center of what our camera is looking at. Gonna move that out a little bit. Now we want to adjust and copy this light. So to copy it around in a circle uh, we'll do something which is we'll make sure that we choose the view coordinate system and we're going to just choose uh, our rotation tool and then choose use the coordinate system center. That way wherever we pan the view will be our rotation icon and we can just kind of put it right around the center here and with angle snap on we'll rotate this about 40 degrees. We'll make sure that we're copying as an instance and we'll make about nine copies. This will give us an array of lights all the way around. Of course because they're created in the top view uh, these are all sitting on the ground. So let's just select all these lights. We'll go over and choose lights from our filter. And uh, we'll also just deselect the center or the target of these lights. And we'll move them up. So just move them up so they're a little bit off the ground. And now we can start to adjust the way that these are going to look and feel. Because they're all instances, if we adjust the parameters on one of them, then we're going to be able to uh, adjust them for the entire set, which is really good. So we can probably, if we just render this out really quickly, you'll see that it's going to be very bright and we also have uh, a really uh, tight cone for these. We want a very wide cone so that the fall off is very very soft. So we'll bring the multiplier down pretty low, maybe a 0.2 and let's also go in and adjust the hotspot to be pretty small, uh, let's say 5 and let's make the fall off something rather large. We'll go with maybe 160 or 150 and now we should be getting uh, a little bit softer light. We're not getting any shadows in the scene yet so we will turn shadows on and just render that out again and we should start to see some of those soft shadows. They definitely need tuning but before we do that let's uh, just make a few more copies of these lights. So let's select all the lights again and finish off our dome. So we want to deselect those targets in the center again and let's just shift drag to move these up 
and we'll copy them as instances. Then what we'll do is we'll scale in the top view on X and Y just to kind of bring them in slightly. We can also rotate these so that they're not all exactly aligned with each other and there's a little bit of an offset. We'll do this one more time so that we have the top of the dome. So I'm shift dragging and then scaling in the top view. And now they're all kind of overlap there. So now we have many, many more lights. And we can do a quick render. Seeing as we have more lights, we'll probably take the uh, intensity down a little bit more. So maybe go with 0.1. And this is a good time to start to add some color. So in this type of scene, we'll probably have maybe a little bit of a blue tinge. Uh, but we can make it warm or cool or whatever it is that we want and quickly render that out. So now we're seeing that kind of blue ambient light bouncing around. And it's a good idea to sometimes render this from the top view so that we can really see how these lights are interacting with the scene. And you can see, in general, we're getting some nice lighting and some soft shadows, but um, these aren't really bleeding together as well as we would like. So I'm just going to scroll, scroll down to the shadow map parameters. We want to make them blend together, so we want to kind of blur them out quite a bit. We'll set a value of 12 here, and maybe, um, I guess we'll leave the size at 512 for now and just do a quick render. And now you should see that those have smoothed out quite a bit more. Um, if we want to do this even more than what we have here, we can reduce the size of these shadow maps to something like 300 or 312. And then we'll just take this, let's break out to kind of a perspective view here, and see what we got. And we can see a lot of those soft shadows kind of coming into play, which is going to give us some nice bounced light. The next thing that we'll do is we'll set this back to a top view and bring in our sunlight. So we'll go and create a target direct light. And I like to create this in the top view here. And we're going to need to adjust its parameters because it's going to use the ones we just kind of set up. So we'll set this to one and we'll set the color to something a little warm that the sun would be. We're going to turn on shadows and set those to ray trace shadows. And we're going to have to adjust that hotspot and fall off quite a bit. Um, you want to just crank these up to uh, really high values so that we can encompass the entire scene. And we'll move this up so that it's casting light and shadows on our scene. And let's just render that out quickly from our camera view. So here we can see we have those nice ray trace shadows coming in and the soft light that we're getting from our sky dome. This gives us a really nice illumination for our scene, some bounce light, and we can go in now and use our three-point lighting techniques to add in some bounced omnis or color lights or uh, even other key lights and rim lights in places where we really want to highlight what's going on. But we also have our sunlight or our key light coming in casting nice shadows in places and that's being diffused by the overall dome light that we set up. And if we want to adjust things like the color or time of day or anything like that, we can rely on the colors of our lights here. So if we wanted to make this a little more war warm, then uh, we could do that there. And you'll see this nice warm light coming in from the sun. And it's being contrasted by the cool light that we have set up for our dome light. But we can just grab that dome light and we can set its color maybe to be a little bit warmer as well. So we can bring this over here. And now we're really warming up the entire scene. We'll just go from 
the camera view there. For the most part, we can usually hide our dome light uh, at this point. So we can go into layers and uh, just say hide. And we can go into tools and we can use our light lister. Um, the light lister will only show two lights, um, which are going to be these two here. Um, and because all of these are instances of each other, so we can go in and name this sun. And then these instances for the dome, we can just adjust their colors as we wish. And we can, you know, set their map size and other things like that right here in the light lister, which is uh, pretty easy to use. So I'm going to set that back there. And let's go into Mental Ray and tune some of our settings for this outdoor setup. We're going to uncheck the material override and just take a look at a quick render with that. And then we're going to adjust some of the samples so that we have a better sample setup. You can see the lighting solution that we have here without our dome because the actual sky dome itself got hidden with the dome light layer. So let's go back in and uh, we can unhide that and we can grab that dome. Just make sure that we set our filter to select all objects again. And let's just go over to the default layer and we'll add that to the layer. So now if we want to hide that we can and we'll render this out and see what we have with our sky dome in the background. This will give us all of our reflections as well as tie in with the colors that we've set for the scene because we have some nice red colors and then the blue that's coming from the sky will balance out the blue light that we have for the bounce light. Okay, so we're looking good so far. Before we up the samples and the size, let's go into our light lister and let's adjust uh, some things about this. So I think our sun we want to be pretty strong and I might up that to about 2 and I may even lower this to a uh, 0.5 for the color on our dome lights. We have so many lights that they're contributing a lot to the scene. That way we get a little more crisp shadows and we should have a little warmer color come in from that sun. And we also want to increase the contrast in our scene. So that's definitely looking a little more interesting. Uh, after you play around with these values and uh, tune the um, colors as well as multipliers the way that you want, um, you can really get some pretty nice setups. And once you do that, we'll probably go in and adjust the mental ray settings. So when we go into renderer, you really want to bring your samples up to maybe 1 quarter 16 and maybe adjust your filter type so you get some really nice anti-aliasing here. So here's the same scene, and you can see that our sunlight, which uh, we'll name sun here, has been set to a pretty high value and then even a lower value for the bounce lights so that we can uh, really get more contrast in there. And also uh, in here we have 1 quarter 16 set for the multiplier of uh, the AA. And we'll just do a quick render of this so we can see the final result. Um, at this AA will take maybe a minute or so to render, but uh, the good thing about this is we're getting some really nice bounce light and um, when we animate this, as long as our shadows are blurred sufficiently, we shouldn't get any real flickering in the scene and you know comparatively a minute on this fairly slow machine is a lot faster than some of the other um, advanced setups that you may do with photon maps and global illumination and other scenarios like that. Okay, so here's the uh, final render there with um, some nice shadows, some nice highlights in places, um, and a pretty well graded render. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you're able to take these techniques to whatever application you may be using this in. Uh, of course, we're showing this here in 3ds Max, but whether you're in Maya or XSI, these types of basic techniques can be um, taken to any application.